Okay. Okay, well, everyone give it up for Jimmy Lai. Hello, I'm Jimmy. I am from Instagram Infrastructure Development Work Team. Today, I will present the topic Automatic Python Refactoring powered by DeepCSD. Um, so, DeepCSD is an open source project. Uh, well, we have a couple of people uh, work on it and open source it. Another major contributor, Benjamin, is here tonight. Yeah, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any question. The, this slide is available on my GitHub. <coughs> you can go to my account, Jimmy Lai, under the talks repository. So um, let's talk about Instagram and Python. So uh, Instagram has been using Python as the primary programming language for its uh, server development. There's more than 3 million lines of code. It's a large code base has been developed for more than seven years. And what we found is the code base grows very fast and a lot of bad pattern got copy passed and also there's a lot of fake code there. We have seen those code quality issues. We have been thinking how can we solve those code quality issue in a more scalable way. We try to use Flint for missing errors but it's yeah, on a large code base it's just a lot of warning and it's kind of annoying to our developers. Um, so, because, so in this code base, it's hard to do some uh, common easy refactoring work. For example, it's hard to deprecate legacy APIs. It's hard to fix existing quality issues and do some simple refactoring. So uh, we have been <coughs> thinking, uh, take a, a step back. We try to ask, uh, ourselves some key questions. First is, uh, how can we find uh, the bad code pattern in a more <coughs> easier way? How can we fix the problems automatically or fix the problems for developers? How can we build tools to help uh, our developers uh, write better code, move faster, and then instead of make them feel noisy? So um, let's take uh, simple example. Um, so in Python, for comparison, you can use is for double equals one, and they are different. Um, for new Python developers, it's common to um, misunderstand them. So in pep at the pep a, there is a recommendation that uh, we should use is when we compare the identity, we should use double equal for compare by value, and in Blake a, there is also two re relevant rules. So given an example code like this, we compare the condition uh, to true with double equal, it uh, should be changed to is, because true is a single term. And we want to use is to check the identity of uh, to a single term. So um, if we want to build some tool to automatically identify this code pattern and automatically fix this for developers, um, a na naive approach could be build something using regex. Um, so we may want to uh, write some regex to match the code pattern, to match the double equal with a true or false. But when we start to look into more example, let's say we have a complex expression like this, we compare this expression to true or the entire if statement is being wrapped with multiple lines. So those kind of formatting changes make the virtual expression pattern match harder. So build a, a tool using regex is not scalable for us. So we want to look for the other um, alternative. Um, so Ideally, we want to have a convenient data structure to help us perform the coma. So coma uh, means automatic refactor. So we got <coughs> source code as string. We want to convert the source code as some structured data. The stru structured data should be easy to traverse and modify. So we can programmatically modify the data and then we can convert the da modified data back to modified source code. So the most common uh, well-used uh, data structure is ASCII. 
it comes with Python. Um, but if we try to use ASP to perform the command run trick, we uh, encounters the issue of the, the formatting information are missing. Um, so this is a example code, and it's still parsed as ASP. We can see the root node is a module node. But we can see all the formatting information, like the comment sign, is missing. So that means if you use an ASP to uh, analyze the code and modify the tree, you cannot convert the modified tree back to the expected source code. Um, so if ASP doesn't work, what about a CSP? CSP means concrete syntax tree. And in Python, there's a popular library <coughs> called the Voodoo tree. Um, so it will convert the examples and the syntax trees. So what we can see here is the tree looks um, very uh, unlike the ASP tree. It looks more uh, low level. Uh, you can see a lot of tokens. Uh, for example, this uh, command sign are parsed as a token under the name zone and it's together with the resource name. So this data structure uh, looks uh, less uh, straightforward uh, compared to ASP. So we, we feel like this uh, is uh, less convenient for us. So uh, we decided to dis uh, uh, build the CSP. So this CSP uh, was is open source. Uh, you can find it under uh, GitHub Instagram the CSP. So our goal is to provide a CSP, but this CSP looks like and feels like ASP. So if we parse a source code as CSP using the CSP parse module, you can get a tree like this. Here we can see a lot of familiar node types like the module node, the if node, and also the comparison node. <coughs> so um, with this, uh, we, we hope this can um, provide us a, as a foundation to build those uh, automatic recursion <coughs> tools. So we preserve all those formatting information as uh, substrate or attributes of the uh, CSP. Okay, so Given a tree like this, how can we uh, traverse the tree to identify the code token? Um, so we also provide the visitor pattern. It's, uh, visitor pattern is a pattern in this ASP. So with this, you can implement a visitor and you can register some callback functions. Um, even an example, this expression A equal to B plus C. Um, will be parsed as a tree like this. The root node is the assign, and there is a binary operator with the stop. So in a visitor, when the tree is visited, it will be visited in the order of the index. So we will visit assign and visit name, and we leave name. So and extra, extra. So if you are interested interested in a specific type of node, let's say we only care about the name, name node, you can register a visit name function like this. Then when you are, when your visitor is being called, whenever the visitor enter a name node, this function will be called. So you can do some uh, specific uh, inspect, inspection there. Um, so, Use visitor to implement the example problem uh, is like this. So we, imp we implement a visitor is uh, register a callback function, visitor compare target. So we want to check all the comparison targets. If the operator is equal or not equal, and if the comparator is the name of true or false, when this condition match, that means we found the target, and here we just print it. So the way we run the visitor on the module tree is like this. So we can see uh, there is one comparison target node got printed out. Um, 
from inflation local. And here we can see some repeated patterns. We often need to check the distance, check the type of snow, and then check the value of snow. So we try to think about a better way, a, a clear way to match the patterns. So we provide the mature pattern. So mature pattern allows you to describe the shape of the tree you want to match. So you can import mature pattern and then we call match with function given a node and a shape. So the shape we want to match here is a comparison target with operator equal to uh, equal or not equal and the comparator is a true name or false name. You can use the Boolean operation and or uh, to compose the more complex queries, but still in a clear way. So with this, we got the same result, but the code is much uh, more readable. And in order to transform the code, so we want to automatically fix the issue. So whenever we match, um, we can use the transformer pattern to modify the, the uh, syntax tree. So the way it works is in the transformer pattern, you, uh, in the Z function, you can return a different node. And so here, when we match this, we check if the operator is equal, we want to convert this as is. So we call, we change it and provide this as the new operator. So <coughs> let's see, what we still run on the same example code, we, we can find that only the uh, double equal sign is being converted to is. All the other code are not touched. That's uh, our exact example. So those are just some basic features of the CSP, and we have other components. We have metadata provider. It performs some static analysis to help you perform uh, more deeper and more advanced code refactoring. We have the CODEMAD uh, framework to help you run your code transforms on a repository has ha having a lot of files easy. We also have some helpers to help you write that code and do more things. We try to provide detailed documentation in Redesign. Uh, okay, next, let's, let's check another example. Uh, <coughs> um, so over time, we want to rename a legacy API. Um, for example, the, in this module, there is a function legacy func. We want to rename it to new func. And uh, this looks simple. Uh, we may ju uh, can just uh, replace all the legacy func as new func. But in Python, it's not just that straightforward because in Python, you can import a library um, in different way. Sometimes you can alias it. So when you see a legacy func, it could come from uh, another library. So for example, here, this b.legacy func is not our target func. Or the imported function is uh, assigned as an alias name. For example, legacy func as func a. So func a is our target, but uh, <coughs> it's not uh, straightforward to find it out. Um, so in this CSP, we provide scope analysis. So it's a metadata provider. Um, there are uh, some uh, relevant uh, metadata provider, expression context, scope, and qualifying name. So basically, we try to traverse the entire syntax tree and analyze each name, assignment, or import, and access it, and create it the structure of scope. So there are so-called scopes like class, function, and comprehension, or global scope. The scopes are a um, data structure which links all the assignment and accesses together. So given a name, you can use qualify name to get a sub concatenated full name. It, this name can help you check the identity of a name. So to use it in the transformer, 
you can just declare the main address and dependency. You say you want qualified main provider. And only when you do this, the metadata will come to you for maintenance policy. So with this, we can uh, call the helper function qualified main provider dot cat. So we we are interested in all the function call. So we register the this call function, and then we just check whether the call function has the qualified name and lead uh, latency pointer. Whenever it is. That means we match the target function. We want to rename the code. We rename the function name as new function. So after this call transform, we can uh, see this is only the expected function call are being renamed. So the other non-target, they are not renamed. And next uh, are some open source is uh, this is the application. There's a uh, third party uh, tornado async transformer uses the C to uh, for upgrading the legacy tornado coding syntax to the async uh, await syntax. And there's a Pi D linter try to provide some auto fix feature for APU um, piling tools. So internally in Instagram, we have a list CSV based auto fix service rules. We have a lot of main rules has auto fix, and we are working on uh, open source it. We hope to uh, share it with the community to help more people write better Python code. So here are some useful links, and this is the open source. So. Your contributions are more than welcome. And we also have a speaker. So if you need a speaker, you can get it on the table or you can go, uh, come to me. Any questions? Thank you. Questions, questions for Jimmy. I've got a couple. Neuron has one. There you go, Neuron. What do tools like PyLint or you know clicking? What do they do? They use the ASP library to yes, like they use ASP, and that's why they cannot provide auto fix. And uh, libcsv like does it perform strictly enough that you could actually use it inside like inside your editor like in like VS Code or something that you plug in uh, in, in as as a linter right? like you know it's um, the same thing that like PyLint. Yeah, it, I think uh, it's uh, quick enough uh, to run as a link. So we already have a link transform with a lot of rules with that link. Good question. We got more? You can answer. Okay. Well, I'll ask my first one. So what is the relation between libcsv and black? I don't know. I think there is no relationship. No relationship? Yeah, because black is built on libcsv. Gotcha. And so libcsv is not based on student Well, Or is it from scratch? Um, it's not uh, from scratch. So for parser, we uh, reuse parcel. So we Which was based on the Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So we just try to construct a different tree, but it, internally, the parser and tokenizer we are using the same. Gotcha. All right. Are there any other descriptions for this? Um, yeah. So there are a couple of internal uh, applications other than. Yeah, so um, yeah, different teams use uh, this CSV to uh, solve their problem, identify code pattern. Rust out configurator. Um, probably not. Yeah. Alexa would not yeah. show up right now. Mm -hmm. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Configure out of using libcsv at all. No. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Yeah, for those who don't know, configurator is an internal configuration tool. Yeah, we're gonna guess based on the name. Yeah, stop. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Python that generates JSON effectively. <laughs> we type and print in Python. Yeah. 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 So great talk. Uh, one challenge I find in maintaining some open source projects is supporting multiple versions of Python. Can you comment on any experience you have using what uh, libcsv for that kind of purpose? Um, like, yeah. So. Uh, so uh, internally, we 
use Python 3. So when we do this use, we start from supporting Python 3.6. And um, we also try to build uh, multi-version multi support. So so far, six GSC support from Python 3.5 to Py 3.8. And um, so, um, so when you pass the code, got it, so, so that, that means you can run uh, this CSC on uh, Python 3 and in uh, any version, and then you can use it, it to parse any version of source code <coughs> from Python 3.5 to 3.8. Um, and when you parse the code, you can provide configuration. <coughs> uh, you can specify if you want to parse the code using which version CSS. Cool. All right. Based on time, I think that's got to be our last one, but I'll take my questions offline. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Thank you.